why Sandy Koufax could have had a real 1982 Topps baseball card. Sandy Koufax has always been a heartbreaker. Super talented but wild in Brooklyn. Killed your team, whoever that was, in Los Angeles. Gone from the game in his prime. 2017 Topps Archive, Sandy Koufax, number 175. This may not be the greatest photo available among 2017 baseball cards in an artistic sense, or even in a technical sense, but it's hard to beat for those of us who appreciate the past and ponder what might have been. A 1982 top Sandy Koufax card? Yes, please. In case you haven't heard, Sandy Koufax retired after the 1966 season due to elbow troubles that plagued him for years. His announcement shocked the baseball world and put an end to an astounding career that seemed to be getting only better when Koufax was just 30 years old. What he lacked in longevity, Koufax made up for in jaw drops, and he set a record for most incredible final season that may never be broken. That year, 1966, Koufax posted a 27-9 record with 317 strikeouts in 223 innings while sporting a 1.73 ERA. If you're a saber rattler, then you probably already know that his .985 whip and 2.07 FIP and his 10.3 war were out of this world too. For his efforts, Koufax nabbed his third Cy Young Award in four years and finished second to Roberto Clemente in the race for the National League MVP. Koufax lost his only World Series start that fall, even though he only gave up one run in six innings. But his Los Angeles Dodgers were overpowered by the Baltimore Orioles. The Frank Robinson-led O swept L.A. in four games, and then Sandy rode into the sunset. The loss of a primetime Koufax was a baseball tragedy, but he had to say goodbye to the game he loved if he wanted to preserve what health remained of his precious left arm. He had no choice. Or did he? My left arm for a time machine. Fast forward to the summer of 1974, when another lefty was leading L.A. towards a pennant. With a record of 13-3 and by mid-July, Dodger ace Tommy John had to shut down his season due to what was commonly called dead arm syndrome at the time. Tests concluded that John had severely injured his ulnar collateral ligament, or his UCL, in his pitching arm, which was more or less a death knell for his career in the 1970s. But team physician Dr. Frank Job wasn't quite ready to give up on John and set to work on an idea that would help revolutionize orthopedic treatment for sports injuries, UCL replacement surgery. On September 25, 1974, Job replaced John's left UCL with a ligament from somewhere else in the hurler's body, and the wait began. Though Job himself gave John just single-digit odds of ever returning to the mound, the 31-year-old entered into a prolonged period of intense rehab. Finally, after 18 months away, John towed the rubber once more on April 16, 1976, when the Dodgers visited Atlanta Braves during the bicentennial season. Though John pitched only in five innings and lost 3-1, to one, he came back five days later, and five days after that. And pretty much every five days all season long, totaling 31 starts. He returned the next season too, and the next, and the next. In fact, John pitched another 14 seasons and racked up three 20-win campaigns after his surgery. He didn't even have one before the surgery. So what does all this have to do with Sandy Koufax? Nothing really, other than both Koufax and John were left-handers who started for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Both sustained significant damage to their left pitching elbows. Both were at the top of their games when they got hurt. Both were in their early 30s when they went down. Granted, John was a soft thrower. He never reached 140 Ks in a season, even before his elbow fell apart. And Koufax? He was a flamethrower. Sandy Koufax in sideburns? Still, imagine what might have happened if it had been Koufax who was the guinea pig for Job's new surgery, rather than John. It's not that far-fetched when you consider that Job started working for the Dodgers in 1964 and that he thought the two pitchers had essentially the same injury. Job lamented the fact that he wasn't smart enough to do that 10 years before. So if Koufax had undergone Sandy Koufax surgery, would he have tacked on another 14 years to his career? The idea seems almost preposterous considering how much of a freight train he was, but pitchers have been known to change their style after injury and craft successful second acts. Hello, Frank Tanana.
If Koufax had followed the Tommy John schedule, he would have gone under the knife before 1967 dawned and maybe been on the mound by the middle of 1968. If he had pitched until he was 46, like John did, Sandy would have finally hung up his spikes after the 1982 season. It's far-fetched. It's impossible, maybe. But what if? I mean, what if? Had Frank Joe been eight years quicker on the draw, these 1982 top Sandy Koufax cards might be buybacks instead of archives. Koufax would have been a true wax pack god to a second generation of little leaguers and card collectors. And wouldn't that have been sweet?